This video is all about the autocomplete text view in Android Studio. This enables you to provide suggestions to the user as he's typing in the text view. For this example, we're going to be using two autocomplete text views and give them IDs ACTV1 and ACTV2 respectively. Change the layout width to about 200 dp. Scroll down to hint and provide a suitable hint. We're also going to use a button and a normal text view for this example. Set the ID of the text view to TV. Now let's add a button at the end of each of the autocomplete text views. To get these kind of icons for Android Studio, the best website is design.google.com. Scroll down to material icons and search arrow. Download the PNGS version of arrow drop down icon. Extract the contents. Open the MIP map folder in your Android Studio project under App, Res, MIP map. As you can see, there are many folders. Each folder represents a size. Copy the images present in the downloaded folder to the respective folders in the Android Studio project. Now, to add the image at the end of the autocomplete text view, Let's add an image view. Set the layout width and height as wrap content. The ID as image. Add a padding of 5 dp. Use the layout align top, align bottom and align right parameters to set the image view where it's required. Lastly, let's connect the icon to the image view. Use the Android source SRC parameter to do this. Do the same thing for the second autocomplete text view. Don't forget to change the IDs. Remember, all these parameters are only possible in the relative layout. So if your parent layout is a linear layout, please change it to relative. Now that the layout is ready, let's move on to the code part of it. The first step is to reference all the widgets. Only by referencing the widgets can you make them perform certain actions. You notice the pink text after r.id, that's the same id you had given them earlier. Let's add some items to the autocomplete text view. To do this, we create strings. In this example, the items in the first string are red and blue. The 
items in the second are car and bike. Now, to connect the string to the autocomplete text view, we create an array adapter. The first parameter of the array adapter is the context, that is this. The second parameter is android.r.layout.simple dropdown item one line. ACTV1, that is the ID of the first autocomplete text view, dot set adapter adapter. The third parameter is a string that you want the array adapter to be associated with. Now, the first autocomplete text view is connected to the string colors. Do the same thing for the second autocomplete text view and this time connect it to the string items. When you click the image view, that is a small down arrow, you want the app to show you the items of the string that the autocomplete text view is associated with. To do this, we set an on click listener to the image view. ACTV1.show dropdown will show you all the items of the string colors. Declare the reference variables ACTV1 and ACTV2 final. Now, when you click the button, you want the app to collect the information from the two autocomplete text views and display it into the ordinary text view below the button. Set an on click listener for the button. ACTV1.getText will get the text from the first autocomplete text view. .toString will convert it to the data type string and save it into the variable s which is a string value. Do the same thing for the second autocomplete text view. Now we are displaying the fetched values in the ordinary text view. The number given inside the dot set threshold function is the number of characters you need to type in the autocomplete text view before it suggests any item from the string. To see the difference, I've set two different values for the two different autocomplete text views. Now let's run the app. As you can see, when I click the image view, it displays items in the string colors. Since I set the threshold value for the first autocomplete text view 2, I need to type two characters for it to start suggesting, and only one character for the second autocomplete text view. Now when I click the button, it fetches the values and displays it in the ordinary text view. And there you go, that's all about the autocomplete text view in Android Studio. There is a lot you can do with the autocomplete text view and therefore there are many functions associated with it. To learn more about them, you can visit this website to which the link I provided in the description below. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe for more on point videos like this.